Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another amazing episode of Lead to Greatness, where we believe in helping others reach their greatness and together we can change the world. Today on Lead to Greatness, we have JP Clement. He has over 30 years of experience in marketing and digital strategy for companies ranging from startups to global brands, such as Madison Square Garden, General Mills, DFS Group, National Geographic, and Johnson & Johnson. On today's podcast, JP discussed digital marketing and all types of strategies and tips to help us market and brand our business. Please help me welcome JP with Digital Marketing. Mm -hmm. Cedric Francis, and you are listening to the Lead to Greatness. You know, digital marketing, especially and marketing in general, uh, especially in the past 20 plus years, has uh, really expanded dramatically and become very complex in terms of the number of things that you can do in marketing, especially digital marketing, you know, how you can do them, uh, looking at the analytics around that. I mean, it's, it's become a super complex universe. And I, I love figuring out that complexity and then translating it into a more approachable morsels that, that our clients can digest and the people I do marketing with or strategy with can really grasp and implement. So that's, that's what really what gets me up. So uh, this part of educating and the people that I work with, not only on my team at Boomtime, but also our clients um, is something that I think is, uh, is super critical and I really, really enjoy doing. Marketing is, tends to be one of these things that you kind of save for later. I think, you know, I don't really need to do marketing now. I'm in startup mode. I, I need to figure out, you know, a bunch of different things and marketing doesn't yeah. seem very important. But, you know, it depends also how, how you look at marketing. The, the way I've done marketing in the past, some of the projects I've worked on, the companies I've worked with, marketing tends to become, if, if you do it right, can become very strategic and can really be at the center uh, of what you do as a company, uh, whether you know, um, mark, marketing kind of spills into into uh, product management uh, uh -huh. to a large extent. So, uh, especially in the digital space, you know, if you have a digital product, your product can become your marketing and vice versa. So, you, you know, it it, beca it 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 can become, but it should be, have, in my my opinion, very uh, part of the strategy around the company. That's how you know it should be integrated into your business model, into your revenue model, into into all all you do, because it touches so many different things, and it's a way to kind of glue all these things together in something that makes sense and tell your story and the why of what you're doing to the outside world. As far as uh, digital marketing, uh, marketing, what are some common mistakes most business startups make and what are some practical steps to correct it? I've seen a lot of various mistakes, but I think the, the key one, especially for younger or companies or startups is taking shortcuts, right? Uh, assuming you know a, a few facts and, and numbers and understand things that you might not understand as well as, as you think mm -hmm. and taking those shortcuts without doing the research and the discovery and you, the thinking that needs to take place to make sure that your digital marketing strategy is uh, solid. I understand why. I mean, it's so, so, sometimes it can be costly. Sometimes you don't know where to look for, what to look for, or where to look for it. But you, you know, taking those shortcuts is a sure way to make some basic mistakes that could be avoided by taking a little bit more time to think and research. Because I'm not a definitely not a market. That's not my industry. <laughs> But well, some of the things I've learned, I mean, even you have companies like Facebook and LinkedIn, they use the blue color and color of, you know, trust. Mm -hmm. And I've recently read a book and it talked about, you know, someone going to an interview with a blue suit on versus gray suit or whatever, you know, just the impact of that. You know, these key things like even a color, you know, and what you're going with. Well, first of all, what's your thought on it? And why do you feel it's important or not important? Yeah, so... Uh, there are so many uh, ways of communicating, which is, um, you know, which is part of marketing, right? You need to communicate and you communicate on many different levels. You communicate on, you know, very explicit levels. You communicate on very implicit levels, like you're talking with colors, right? Colors, nobody thinks about colors in those ways, but it's been proven uh, that they do have an impact on how people feel about 
companies, brands, services, or whatever you know is out there in the marketplace. So, so do names, right? So do um, you, you know the, the the typeface that you use on your website and, and your collateral. Uh, so, um, so there's a lot of different factors uh, that impact you know uh, either very in a very obvious way and in, in many times in not so ob obvious ways how people are going to feel about your brand and, and your products and your services and all of that. Um, so all of this is important. That's that's the key thing I think is that. You know, there's not, it's not like back in the days when I started doing marketing where you could do a couple of things in marketing and literally a handful of things and that was it. Now with digital marketing, with the way the world has been globalized and everything, you know, you have to really be disciplined in looking at, okay, all the things that can impact your marketing, all the tools that you can use in your marketing and try to figure out the best way to put them together to have the desired effect. And marketing is all about changing behaviors and attitudes, right? So you want to, what you're doing in marketing to influence what people think about your brand and how they interact with it and you know how they decide to purchase it or, or not. I want to talk about own time. What inspired you to begin this journey as a CEO? Um, you know, I started my first, own, my an agency of my own uh, in 2009. Uh, after that, I started two more. Um, and I was pretty successful doing it, but as a business person, I mean, I've, I've been in business for 30 plus years, for 30 years, wow. um, I, and a kind of a serial entrepreneur, I was always really bothered by the fact that digital marketing uh, and marketing in the general at the agency level was something that was very difficult to scale. So think about it, you know, uh, as an agency, uh, if you want, if you get twice more clients, you probably need close to twice more people in your company to actually make it work. Assuming everybody's at capacity, right? As a business person, it's really galling, right? Because you have, you know, this, you have these great people, they're doing great work and doing great marketing, but you get more business, you just need to get more people. And the probability that you're going to keep getting great people and, and so on uh, kind of tends to decrease. Um, so I was, for 10 years, literally, I've been thinking about how can we make this more scalable, also more consistent, more repeatable, right? Because the problem with a lot of marketing that people don't realize you have to be disciplined, you have to be able to do the right thing at the right time right. and be more product oriented, if you want, in, in your marketing services to make sure that you're more re repeatable and scalable. So I've been thinking about that for 10 years and um, actually started an agency my, of my own um, when I moved to New Mexico from uh, California. And through, through that agency, I actually uh, met the person that was the founder and ex-CEO of Boomtime. Um, and we sat down uh, for a quick meeting and uh, we realized that we had been thinking about the same thing for about the same amount of time, but we had approached it from very different angles. Um, and his, his angle uh, was, from a technological standpoint, mine was from a very product product marketing standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, so I was trying to productize marketing. He was trying to use technology to make it more scalable and uh, and more uh, replicable. Um, and so we really kind of we were two peas in a pod. We we're like talking and talking and talking, and then. We went our separate ways, but a couple of years later, he remembered that conversation. He was trying to replace himself at the head of uh, Boomtime, and uh, he approached me. And as I said, definitely after a lot of due diligence, talking to the people in the company, looking at how he had actually implemented that scalability of marketing through technology, and uh, and and so on. And in the end, it was a perfect match for me. And you know, I, I always wanted to run the company like that, and it's been it's been awesome so far. I want to turn a little bit, you know, not only are you CEO of a company, but you have to lead people. What are some great characteristics, values, and qualities that you believe every great leader should have and why? Yeah, so there are a lot, but I think, you know, to me, it comes down to a few things that I think everybody should have in their personal lives, but also in their professional lives. It's around things like, I think you need to have a lot of self-awareness of who you are mm -hmm. uh, to be able to project the kind of things that you want to project uh, to, because, you know, a lot, I see a lot of people in, you know, again, in my personal life, but in my professional life who are, you know, really good at something, like maybe a great marketers, right? Tons of experience in marketing, great marketing, but zero self-awareness and therefore total inability 
to to lead people just because they don't even know who they are. Wow. Um, uh, so to me, that self awareness is very very critical, and you know, and trying to be and which is hard to be as objective as possible about what you find when you do that self awareness experiment. But also, and so that goes to to me with a, another key thing is to be humble and vulnerable. You know, just because you're leading people doesn't mean that uh, you shouldn't be uh, vulnerable or shouldn't be humble about it. And I think that goes with self-awareness too, but the ability to say, you know, to put yourself in other people's shoes, uh, that you, people that you're leading and being, being able to be aware of your, your uh, you know, issues, your own issues or things you can do better and have, be able to do that self-awareness assessment at the same, with the same time with some kind of vulnerability and humility to me is, is critical to be a leader. But I think, you know, also, and, you know, a, a desire to, to keep learning, to, to not think that you know everything and <laughs> and can rest on your, on your laurels is pretty critical because I think, you know, I think to, to me, at, at least my life, I see my life as a learning experience from basically day one. And, and I hope I can continue that spirit until I, <laughs> until I pass on um, because it's really, you know what makes makes it the most fun for me at, at least. But but I think a good leader should be able to remain excited about learning new things, new ways to do business, new ways to do marketing, and and so on. You know, then there's the typical ones. You know, uh, lead by you know by demonstrating the, how to do the right thing to your people, as opposed to tell to telling them how, how to do it or uh, what to do. Being a your human being first, who's trying to manage other human beings yeah. and lead other human beings. One, I think that taught to me by one of my mentors. First, he was always the first one at work and the last one <laughs> leaving work. Uh, all the meetings he had, and he was scribbling the, like in tiny little handwriting uh, in these big books. And you know, at the end of the quarter, he his book would be about this thick because he had been writing so much. Um, and uh, you know, so he basically he left nothing to chance. You know, everything was kind of uh, recorded. Everything was analyzed. You know, he went. He always went back to those books. I could see him do it, and it was really interesting to see that. You know, um, all of that takes a lot of work, but you, you know, this discipline, this way to you know always be there for your team, do what you want everybody else to do, and and, and so on, and be very disciplined was kind of a especially because I came. You know, I, I came to to this thinking about marketing being. It was early in my career. Thinking marketing was this. You know, very creative endeavor, and you know, and didn't realize that actually all, all of that took a lot of discipline. Um, and just not, but in this case, just not marketing, but also manager managing people. And uh, you know, and he was, but at the same time, he was very empathetic and uh, very, as I said, you always had had your back, right? If you work for him, you were covered. And all of these things, I think that's something that's things I've really taken to heart and try to to do in uh, when I became a manager myself. Um, and still do to this day. You said something earlier that I want to go back to with marketing. What's the difference? How would you explain that to him? The difference between marketing and digital marketing? Yeah, so it's um, it's a little. I mean, uh, it's a bit difficult to answer, but uh, especially today, you know, in today's marketing era, um, the the boundary between what I would call traditional marketing and digital marketing has really, really become very uh, diffuse and gray. Um, and very well, not, not very well defined. Uh, but so when I started, there was nothing such as, um, you know, digital market marketing. So marketing at, the, at that time was what we would now call traditional marketing. It was, you know, print. Uh, so magazines, news, newspapers, radio, TV, and outdoor, right? So that was kind of what you could do. That was it. <laughs> um, and you know, today, just within digital marketing, there are probably, I think at last count, there's over 40 different subcategories of digital marketing that you can wow. do, which is insane, right? <laughs> um, compared to the five or the small handful that 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 we had 30 years ago when I started doing market doing marketing, and that you know, all all that changed around 90, 94, 95. Uh, last century <laughs> um, and so and for a one long time you know there was when I was doing digital marketing in the late 90s you were still trying to tell uh, the people you're working with in, in your company like the, the higher ups in the company or whatever you know why they should be doing digital marketing and and to prove the value of digital marketing uh, versus what they were used to doing um, in traditional marketing okay. um, 
So that's why I was talking about marketing versus digital marketing. But today, honestly, you know, any TV campaign will have a digital component attached to it, right? Um, and some digital marketing campaigns will have, an, you know, a, uh, a physical, like maybe a newspaper or magazine, you know, segment to it too. So, I mean, everything, you know, everybody now in their print ads puts um, either a website address or or a, a QR code or a, a Facebook page or something like that. So, you know, I think the it, those two have blended. So but there's still a little bit of a separation, obviously. Some things are purely physical and some things are purely di digital, but you, you know, that, that boundary is blurred. Yeah, I always hear stories of CEOs, entrepreneurs that started up maybe 30 years ago, 20 years ago. What I constantly hear is the marketing opportunities that we have today, if we would have had that 20 years ago, I'd be a lot mm -hmm. further on than I actually am today. Would you agree with that statement? Oh yeah, I felt that many times. <laughs> also one of my mentors, uh, different, from, different from, from the one I talked about, but I remember it was in the early nineties uh, and she was like raving about the fact that, you know, what did we do before the fax machine existed, right? <laughs> um, and uh, looking back, I'm like, oh my God, if I had that, those tools that we have today, uh, you know, for marketing back then, we could have done so much more, so much better and, and, and so on. Not that we didn't do a good job, but, you know, it, it would have been so much easier. Um, and so I, I, for one, am fully embrace this ch uh, very rapid change in marketing. And, uh, you know, I, th I think at this point, pre pretty much everybody has. Uh, al although, you know, some of our clients, we still find them kind of still clinging a little bit to traditional ways of doing business and marketing or sales. Um, because we deal with mostly B2B companies. So marketing and sales become very, very interwoven um, and very close to one another versus maybe, you know, some, uh, uh, some of the B2C businesses out, out there. Um, but, you know, they used to go to trade shows until last, uh, last March. They used to do a lot of their selling and marketing in, in person, right? Get a booth at a trade show and, and generate some banners and some collateral and, print it out and go to a trade show. And then now, I, I, you know, when the, the, the pandemic hit, no, no more of that. So what we provide as an agency for, for them was a kind of a, a, a big relief, right? Uh, in the sense that, you know, we could, they, they could now do online with the tools we have, what they used to do at trade shows. And they could do it actually more efficiently. And we could prove the ROI of what they were doing, which is not the case, which was not the case before, because we, we, we asked them, you know, so, what was the ROI of one of your trade shows typically? Um, no answer. They never had uh, bothered to figure it out because wow. they didn't need to. That's the way they did the business. So, you know, there's, but, but again, you know, it's understandable. This, as I said, this digital marketing world is very complicated. And for people who've never really done it, people, as you said, who've been CEO for 20 years of a company, they probably started themselves. Uh, it, you know, it's not something that they had to educate themselves on. So, this is where we come in and take the burden and, uh, and educate them at the same time we help them with their marketing and sell. And you said something, honestly, I never even thought about it till now. I'm like, wow, nobody did trade show in over a year, but marketing is still happening and it is happening digital. And it's like, wow, it's like, it took something like pandemic and something so horrific to change the way companies think going from this traditional to right now. I want you to speak to that entrepreneur, that CEO, because you're talking about digital marketing. It's totally different. I mean, you just said it's minimum, at least 40 different. I mean, so for entrepreneurs starting off, I mean, that could be so overwhelming to an individual that I just want to do what I do. You know, I'm not focused on, you know, this whole digital marketing thing. I'm not concerned. So what advice would you give to that individual that know they need to get their product out at this point of their life. It's like, I don't know where to start. There's so many options. Mm -hmm. Where do I start? So JP, yeah. let them know, <laughs> help us out right now. Where do yeah. we start? Well, uh, so, you know, this increasing complexity, although it's kind of um, a little bit alleviated by the fact that you also have a lot of resources on online mm -hmm. that can help you kind of figure out what makes sense. Right. So, but, but again, maybe not something that a, uh, uh, the leader of the startup has time to dig into and research and do the thing. Right. So, you know, um, uh, very often, I mean, I, and I know it sounds self-serving, self but 
very often the best way is to go to experts, uh, an agency, a consultant, uh, someone outside of your company that has that, that knowledge. Um, you know, it, it could be also a peer group, right? You, you can find some of these groups on, online or you might have a local support group that, you, you know, can help you do that. And especially for startups, there are definitely some of these out there. But look, you know, the, the you know, and I was on the corporate side for a very long time. Um, I came to the agency side a little bit later. Uh, you know, it's there's no shame, or if you have the resources, into going and fight and getting the help from, as I said, from an agency or from uh, from consultants. Um, you know, it's really good to when you know what you don't know, as we say in our industry, and and there are great way, you know, and so we uh, you know we offer a ton of uh, of our uh, content for free. You, you know, actually we we're about to to launch an initiative called Boom Time U, which is you know it's there's a university of digital marketing because we realize over the years we've written about the equivalent of the 175 page book. Uh, in terms of articles and things about digital marketing. So we're going to put all that content into like a curriculum format and people can can use it for free. So wow. as I said, there are a lot of, um, of um, ways to educate yourself out, out there. But, you, you know, if you want to take a shortcut and you have some resources, meaning money, you know, going to a consultant or an agency is a great way to actually cut those corners and still get to where you need to go. Uh, and hopefully that agency will be uh, you know, we'll have the same kind of principles that we have where we try to educate as much as possible. So not only you're getting great marketing service, but you're also learning at, at the same time. Because even with a, a lot of startup companies, you know, here a lot of people will say, man, I don't have the money to do marketing because I believe you lose in the long run if you don't have it. Give me your thoughts on it and, yeah. and your insights. Uh, ab absolutely. Uh, actually, we published a paper, um, like a kind of a white paper, or we call it like a a playbook last April, I think, uh, or April, maybe May. And it was all about, you know, marketing in the recession. Um, and the, the main point, like I think it was in the opening paragraph was now is the time to invest in marketing. Now, now is not the time to like lean back and say, oh, I can't afford to do marketing. No, no. Now is the time to actually do marketing and do more marketing and smarter marketing, more efficient mar mar marketing, which is where obviously self-serving will come into play but um but yeah it's uh, you know it's absolutely what what you say is absolutely correct uh you know you have to invest you cannot afford not to invest in marketing and that goes for everybody unless you really have the most amazing product or service that you're putting out in the marketplace and nobody's ever seen anything like this and truly you know they're going to knock your door down to get what you have to offer unless you're that you have to do marketing, you know, but it's, that's the only way you can cut through the clutter and uh, really position yourself uh, and, and get, you know, all these leads that you want at the top of the funnel, right? Um, the, you know, gaining awareness, uh, get, making sure they move to interest and, and consideration. You know, you can only do that in this day and age through marketing. JP, thank you. Thank you. What are some practical marketing or digital marketing tips, tools, and advice you can share with the Lead to Greatness community to help us reach our greatest potential? You know, I think one of the things I, I tell a lot of uh, people that we work with is, is you know, follow the numbers. Uh, one of my other mentors told me something that, you know, applied to marketing, which I never really had, you know, thought about. Obviously, I was kind of young and um, not very experienced, but he said, look, you know, if you can't measure it, you cannot manage it. Taking the time to set um, KPIs, right, key performance in indices for anything you do in marketing, or 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 even more so, like overall strategy of your company, but not setting goals, not tracking to those goals, not measuring what you're doing, is something that you know um, I see a lot of companies do, and it's not really um, it's not sustainable. You're never going to be able to 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 be able to tell whether what you're doing is working or not, if you're not measuring it, if you're not looking at the numbers and the facts, you know, it's and not just the analytics, but maybe doing some market research to confirm, you know, maybe a gut instinct or a hunch or something that's uh, anecdotal, right? You need to follow the numbers uh, to be able to, uh, to do marketing right. And the beauty about digital marketing is that it generates a lot of analytics, a lot of numbers. And of course you have to know, understand how to interpret them, how to look at them and, and so on. But, you know, doing that very basic part of tracking what you do in marketing um, and uh, especially in digital marketing. And, and there's a ton of tools out, out there. I mean, 
Google, you might like them, you might not like them, but they offer really, really sophisticated free products like Google Analytics, right? Um, that, you know, I, I was amazed. I was on a podcast um, a couple of weeks ago uh, with a company that does research uh, in Europe and they had researched small and medium-sized businesses and 80% of them were not using any kind of web tracking tools. And Google Analytics is free. I mean, it, it takes literally, I've done it myself. It takes five minutes to set up Google Analytics for your company, for, for your website. So, you know, this idea that people are not paying any attention to their analytics makes, you know, is puzzling for me because there are a lot of tools out there and a lot of ways to do it. And it's absolutely critical that uh, any company engaging in any kind of marketing takes the time to decide on what measures they're going to track and to track them and then to make decisions based on that tracking. I think, you know, um, I, I was using the Google Analytics uh, example as one of these big tools, kind of a kind of macro level. It does a lot of different things that are very critical for any digital marketer or any marketer period. But that's kind of a pretty u universal tool that does a lot of things really well. But you can also get more granular and go into some very specific areas of digital marketing or of tracking specific things and whatnot. Uh, so for instance, you can go into social media marketing, you know, um, and then there are tons of tools there that can allow you to do better digital uh, social media marketing, for instance, you know, people probably know about Buffer and Hootsuite and those kinds of places that allow you to, to use multiple um, accounts uh, on multiple uh, channels and schedule po posts and do all kinds of and then have a ton of analytics. There are also some companies that just focus on just purely analytics for Facebook and analytics for Instagram. And I mean, so there is like a plethora of tools. There's, there are actually for every type of digital marketing, there's probably a hundred different tools that you can use, not, not just for analytics, but to, to help you do the work. So it's a very complex market. Again, if people go to our website, we provide a lot of information. For instance, we have we had a series of, of articles about uh, LinkedIn and, you know, is it worth using Sales Navigator, right? Or it's, it's kind of expensive, but you know, is it worth it? Our point of view, yes, it is worth it. But so we have a bunch of articles about things like that, that, you know, and lead, lead capture and CRM tools and things like that, that are very critical to do a good job of digital marketing. So it's all there at boomtime.com under resources. That's one place to find it. There's plenty of other places on the internet, but you know, that's an easy one. Yeah. And, and, and it's awesome. I mean, lead to greatness. I mean, this is a lot. I mean, the digital marketing, obviously, is a lot of information, a lot of different areas. I know uh, JP probably can talk about this all day and all day. But what I want you to do, I want you to I want you to go with the website, go to go to Boom Time and I want you to check it out. Uh, that is that is awesome. I'm, JP, I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, listen, listen, lead to greatness, Google Analytics. Uh, it's a, a software free and it's a software that we can use in our business because I, I love this. I love this quote from your mentor. If you can't measure it, you can't manage it. I think that is so awesome. And that is a knowledge bomb by itself. Uh, man, this is awesome. JP, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, sharing with us. If someone wanted to connect with you and what you're doing, where should they go? Oh, well, the best place is probably to go to boomtime.com, our website. So B O O M T I M E.com. Uh, there is a ton of, as I said, ton of free information there. Uh, you don't have to buy anything if you don't want to. And, you know, and you can find me on LinkedIn. I'm, I spend a lot of time on LinkedIn. I, on LinkedIn, I'm at uh, uh, it's linkedin.com slash in slash JP Clement. On behalf of the Lead to Greatness community, I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule and adding value to us. Well, thanks for having me. Don't forget to subscribe to Lead to Greatness if this is your first time. And if this podcast was helpful to you, leave a big thumbs up. And also, I want you to check out our Marriage Coach Podcast, the podcast with my wife and I. If you're on iTunes, please rate this podcast and leave a review and help get the word out. Again, thank you, Lead to Greatness Nation, for joining us on today. Looking forward to seeing you again on next week. Till then, remember, if you help others reach their greatest potential, together we can change the world. Peace, we out.